Now, when you're finding the zeros, these are the x-intercepts. This is where the graph crosses the, the x-axis. It's where the y-coordinate is zero. So by setting f of x here equal to zero, uh, you know, we can go ahead and solve for these zeros. But what we're going to do first is we're going to use the rational root theorem, or oftentimes called the irrational zero theorem. And what you do is you take all the factors of the constant divided by all the factors of the leading coefficient. And these, this gives you like a narrower list, okay, of possible rational zeros. Rational meaning a ratio, like a fraction of two, two quantities. So let's do that. We're going to take all the factors of 24, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24, right? All divided by plus or minus 1. So the leading coefficient isn't always 1. Sometimes it might be, you know, 3 or something like that. And you have then plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, which then could lead a... Uh, you know, leave us some fractions as possible zeros. Now, uh, up to this point, you might have just been doing the synthetic division and just checking all of these, okay? But what we're gonna do here is, uh, we're gonna just try to be strategic. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a number somewhere in between um, positive one and positive 24, okay? So let's maybe shoot for the middle. That's what I typically do. I'm gonna try six to see if that's a, uh, if that's a zero. So let's go ahead and do the synthetic division with six. Again, we're using the leading coefficients here, uh, the numbers in front of the variable. So we've got 1, negative 5, negative 2, 24. And we're just doing that synthetic division. Okay, I've got other videos about this if you need to review uh, this concept. Okay, but what you can see is I tested to see if 6 was a 0. The remainder here ended up coming out to 48. It wasn't a 0. So that tells me that 6 is not a 0. But what the upper bound tells us is that when you're testing a positive zero, you're testing a positive quantity, and if all these numbers down here are positive, okay, what that tells you is, is that six is an upper bound, okay? So that means there's not gonna be any zeros that are greater than six, any positive zeros. So that eliminates positive eight, positive 12, and positive 24. So you can see we just cut down our work by quite a bit, right? So what I would do then from there is I'd say, well, let me see if I can kind of, you know, split the difference here again. Let me see if maybe I pick maybe like a, either two or three, okay? I'm gonna just pick three, okay? So let's do synthetic division again with three. If this ends up being an upper bound, it's gonna eliminate three and four, okay? Maybe I should have checked two, but I'll just check three here. So this is, again, one, negative five, negative two, 24. And let's see, we're gonna bring down the one here. Okay, that's three, uh, that's negative two, that's negative six, negative eight, Ah, there we go, negative 24. So that is, three is a zero, okay? So what that tells us is that um, three is a zero, and we brought this down from a cubic to a quadratic. So when you do the synthetic division, that brings this down by one degree. So now we're down to x squared minus two x minus eight equals zero, and we can factor this, okay, and set the factors to zero. So you can see it's gonna be positive four, negative two, and three. Okay, now, I didn't get into the negative zeros, but let me just do an example. Say, for example, I started checking the negative values, and let's just say I checked a negative six. So let's do that again. Just pretend like we're starting the problem from the beginning, and I'm checking for negative zeros here. So I'm checking negative six. If I bring down one, I get, uh, let's see, negative six. This comes out to negative 11. This is positive 66. This is 64. And let's see, what's 64 times negative six? <clears throat> well, let's see, it would be negative 360 and 24. So that's a negative 384. So negative 384 plus the 24, which would be what? Negative 360. Okay, now you can see that this didn't come out to zero. So negative six is not a zero. But what's interesting is see how these numbers, they alternate positive, negative, positive, negative. Or if they were to alternate negative, positive, negative, positive. If they alternate like that when you're checking for a negative zero, that tells you that this number here is a lower bound which means that there's not any zeros that are lower than that number. So you could automatically rule out negative eight, negative 12, and negative 24, which cuts down your work considerably. So again, just remember that if you're checking for a positive zero, okay, after you write this list of rational uh, zeros, okay, pick a positive zero. If you end up getting all positives down here, that tells you that that's an upper bound. There's nothing that's going to be larger or greater than that quantity. And when you're checking for a negative zero, if you get this alternating, okay, it doesn't matter if it starts with positive or negative, but it continues to alternate, okay, positive, negative, or negative, positive, like that, then that tells you it's a lower bound, and you're not going to have any quantities that are lower than that. So it's a way of narrowing down when you're doing the synthetic division uh, what your possible zeros are so that you can 
you know, factor this and graph it and find all the zeros and so on. So I would recommend checking out some of my other videos about uh, uh, Descartes' uh, rule of signs as another way of narrowing down. Uh, synthetic division, I've got a video about that. And then even just graphing these uh, rational polynomials. So subscribe to the channel. Check out some of my other videos again on Mars Math Tutor and YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.